Hey guys, John here. Today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. All right, so a couple things to talk about before we get into the patch. This has been layered by a pad and some random noise, so without the lead. We kind of just have that as a background, and it's getting panned left and right. Kind of setting the atmosphere. So for now, let's turn off these two uh, layers here, and let's dissect the patch a little bit. So this is the patch just by itself. So first of all, let's turn off all the effects and let's kind of see what's going on here and understand it a little bit better. So let's bypass all these, bypass that one, bypass that one. Really, there's only three modulation sources I did for this one. So we'll turn off the filter, the sampler, the second oscillator. So let's look at this first one here. So this envelope here, kind of controlling the sound, has like a little bit, little bit later of an attack because like you can put it closer, but it has a really pokey kind of sound. So it's kind of up to you how you want to play with the attack, but definitely kind of a shorter decay and kind of play around with the le release to taste and the curve of the decay. And then the next thing is looking at the waveform. So I start out with the basic shapes with the sine wave, and this is kind of the moves here with the harmonics to kind of place them a little bit random until you kind of hear that bell sound because bells are really going to be more so a, an inharmonic type of sound so the harmonic sequence isn't going to be so perfect so you kind of want to just do random and then you're going to notice when you hit that type of sound and then a nice cool feature of this i right click this and copy this to the second oscillator and drop this down an octave so that kind of helped it out a little bit and the thing that i'm actually doing here a little bit is this uh is this form scale so we're at 59.50 right here. So you can kind of move and kind of find the certain sweet spot if you'd like. Like even that sounds kind of cool. I found this type of warping very cool. I, I did try inharmonic for this one, but doing an inharmonic on an inharmonic seemed kind of redundant and it didn't sound as good as I thought. So I think form scale was kind of cool for this. So maybe we'll leave it on that one. And then for the next oscillator, I turned this guy on and it's literally a copy of this one down here, but I didn't do any type of forming or anything because I kind of wanted it to be a little bit different. So the phase interactions of both oscillators kind of have their own characteristics, so to speak. And then the really trick to make it to make it sound creepy is the slight detuning, which is this first LFO. And this is getting modulated bipolar by was that 0 0.50 in the negative direction. So let's uh unbypass that and this unbypass that so like there's certain spots where it just sounds detuned and kind of wrong and kind of distant and that's really the meat and potatoes of this whole sound and you can kind of play around with how much you want to detune it this one i did like 0.46 and i also det fine detuned uh both oscillators a little bit just so they're just not w hanging out with each other they're, they're they're close but they're just not exact and then moving on from that i have a noise filter That's actually going to the sample right here. So let's unbypass this right here. Now, this is the kind of the cool part about this noise. So this noise is first going into this filter, which as you can see, the, the noise is here on white noise. And then I'm using the second LFO as a triangle and doing the stereo option, not entirely all the way, but a little bit. And it kind of gives that jarring wind kind of sound to it. So if we isolate just that wind part, this is what we're going to be hearing. So it's definitely kind of strange. I have the uh, the key keyboard symbol here, the key tracking thing on for the noise, so the noise changes pitch with it. I thought it sounded kind of cool. Um, definitely a preference for that. So let's go ahead and turn on our oscillators, and this is what we have without effects, as we can see they're all turned off. Oh, whoops, the chorus is still on. Goodness. So let's turn the chorus off. And that's what the noise is doing just by itself there. And then over on the effects, so this is quite a lot of effects that I kind of added on, but it's just a little bit of a lot of things. So first we got the chorus. And there was no specific uh, methodology to turning these knobs. It's kind of one of those ones where it's like, how do I make it creepy, but also still sound musical at the same time? And that's kind of where it ended up here. 
And then for the delay, I always generally turn the delays down because it's it kind of comes on pretty hot. And then they're at quarter notes here. And then the mid ping pong is actually a really cool difference. So rather than the mono, just right in front of you, it's kind of cool with a mid ping pong. Kind of feels more stereo and moving around your head a little bit more. And then what's what's creepy without a little bit of distortion and a little bit crush to kind of make the quality just just a little bit worse. Very subtle, but here let's turn this up. So we're at 1.6 for this, right? So that's the stuff we're going to be adding, but just a slight, slight little bit amount of that. A little too much can get carried away. And then just a little bit of compression. Single band, nothing too crazy going on here. And then some EQ to kind of taper off the uh, 1K-ish, I think it was. Oh, no, we're here. Yeah, like one, yeah, 1. Yeah, 1.6K or something like that, just to kind of trail off that... Uh, harshness a little bit because it's kind of a harsh sound and then you just want to soak it in reverb i did bring up the size and the chorus amount and kind of just played with the mix till i felt it was right and then the time i, I did try it a little bit at two seconds but it seemed a little bit much so that's this is what it would have sounded like It's just a lot of extra reverb, it kind of gets lost a little bit, so I brought it back down to the default at one by double clicking that. And then let's take a look at the mixer for this one. So, yeah, so there's nothing going on. I generally, I like to have a outboard EQ on the channel strip and a, a compressor just kind of standing by just in case I need it. But I try to do most of it in-house in the sand that if, I, if there's other corrections I want to make, I have that there, but not necessarily using them for this patch. And then added in with everything else, it kind of sounds like it belongs with everything. All right, so that was pretty much that patch in a nutshell. Hopefully that cleared some stuff up for you. I feel it's better to show you rather than to just give you random values where then it's easier to learn this way. So let me know if you guys liked the video and enjoyed it and maybe learn something and we'll see you in the next one.